This looks like an adventure, though. Must admit, my curiosity is making my wings twitch. Something awful, but I'm not quite sure I'm this curious. I'm going to start sneaking in. Sorry, zoned right. out. What happened? Static cast a uh, pass without trace. And he's going to start to sneak inside. Twenty six, fifteen, eighteen, twenty three. Getting your guys' characters on my new map. So while you guys sneak into this cave, who wants to be in the front? Who wants to be in the back? Not it. I'm way in the back. <laughs> I'll be in the. I'll be in the middle. I don't care where I go. First. So you guys walk into this cave and as you approach in a little bit of light gives off in the back and you can see two bodies are laying back here that they both appear to be uh either unconscious or asleep or dead. There's also a ton of eyebrate in the back corner here. You can see eyebrate uh, here and all along the south wall. And then there's a little bit to the north. Some right here as well. And there's some there, yep. So this cave is uh, is covered in this, this eyebright. But as you walk in this cave, it, there's a chilling feeling and you know how you have that feeling sometimes where you're being watched, but you you don't see anyone there, and you kind of look around, and you just it kind of freaks you out a bit, and the hair on your back of your neck stands up. That's the feeling you guys have as you're walking in this cave. Probably can't see it too well, but can I hear anything? There seems to be uh, the ceiling drips with water in a couple of places, and as you're trying to listen in the distance one of those yellow balls that you guys saw the one night that would flicker and change colors uh, pops into view and as it does it illuminates a good section of the cave and it just bobs like it used to what color is it it is yellow i want to cast this real quick You don't notice any traps. Um, you do feel the presence of more of these wisps around the room, though. And as Rue, as you start to walk in, another wisp uh, pops into view. Is he yellow, too? Yep, he's yellow. Well, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm investigating. See? Peggy meant well, uh, for the most part. And I see the bodies. I want to start moving slowly over towards them. Smart. Okay, as you walk. They all still yellow. More of these orbs appear. And then one appears right next to the tops. And they're all just yellow and just bobbing up and down. Walk slower. Hey, Falstaff, touch it. One kind of bounces over towards Rue. One kind of is bouncing next to Falstaff. They give off a... Um, it's not a evil feeling, but it's like a, a feeling of like a energy. I look back at Dadic. Kind of like a light bulb. Rue's going to kind of hold her hand out towards it. It backs away. Right before you get too close, it just moves back a bit. And each time one of you try to reach out to touch the the ball, it it is. I wanna I wanna like wiggle the fingers like you're playing with a kitty, 
see if it's like it matches or it starts bouncing around with my hands. Make performance check. <laughs> it kind of bounces in motion with you, but doesn't seem like it gives too much care. But as you're doing that, it flies completely through your body and then to the other side. You don't feel anything as it moves through you. All right, that was weird. <laughs> I'm going to disregard the little will-o'-wisp and kind of go towards the body. Am I am I smelling the, the dead body smell yet, or what am I noticing over here? So as you approach these two bodies, um, but one of them is wearing a... Uh, they both look to be peasant garbs. They don't like to have very much money, but there's a longbow next to one. They're both bleeding, and they both are look deceased. One of them is wearing some really nice bracers that give off a faint magic that you can pick up as a wizard. And there's also a, a large potion that sits in between them. But they both look like they've been uh, scratched and ripped apart by something. There's cut marks over them. Climb on this rocket. Okay. As Rue approaches the bodies, she's going to kind of kneel down towards one of them, but then she's going to look back at the the will-o'-wisps that are closest to her. Are they, I mean, still yellow and bouncing? Yeah, they're also yellow, just bouncing around. Okay, they're not they seem to be uh, exploring the room. They're moving around the room, checking you guys out. Not to get too close, but you get a sense they're looking over. Oh, I love them. They're so cool and cute. Okay, you... I'm going to look... Sorry, go ahead. What do you feel like if you touch side? Not me. I'm looking at dead bodies over here. Why don't you try, Callus? You want them. I didn't want to come in this damn cave. You wanted Eyebright, so we got you Eyebright. From a crazy thing. So investigating these bodies with a 23, you find a... Uh, a potion, 45 gold pieces, the the very well-crafted bracers that appear to have some sort of magic enchantment, and a regular longbow. So a potion of something. I'll type it up. And then regular uh, peasant garments if you want those too. They almost look like they're wearing uh, potato sacks. You said they look like they're dead, or they appear to be dead. Are they really dead? Yeah, with the 23, you can you see the, the scratch marks across their bodies. and They look like they've been dead for some time. I'll poke it with my stick. Yeah, they seem pretty dead. <laughs> Where'd you get a stick? I have my quarter staff, sorry. So so fast staff definitely feels like something's watching him. So he wants to see if he can detect the thoughts of anyone nearby. Okay. Last two paragraphs of that kind of explain it. You detect a thought directly above Rue and Tops, kind of floating above them. Oh. I look over there. Can I see anything? I don't have dark vision. Uh, well, the will is give off a nice light, which helps you guys see, but you don't see anything even with the light. Hey, guys. You might want to come over here. Hey, uh, Tops. Hey, Tops. I found a pretty cool rock. You want to check it out? <laughs> Wait, what's what's the problem here? I'm going to I'll look over towards them, but I'm going to put the cool vibe bracers on at the same I'm time. I'm excited about doing that. Rock. Please be gauntlets of overstrength. 
Well, we'll see. <laughs> As I put the bracers on, yeah, I want to see the Arcana checks, see if I can see what they do. Because you guys have a guy that can cast Identify now, you can tell they're magical. You can tell the potion. So you can tell the bracelet are magical, and then there's the potion, but the potion doesn't seem magical. Wait, what the bracers look like? Were they fashionable? <laughs> they are brown. Uh, they're made of leather. Very fashionable. They look like something that a uh, like a very prestigious like uh, leather rogue or like a hunter would wear in WoW. I'm just gonna send a little message to Rue. There's something above you. You might want to get out of there. The uh, all right. The the potion is orange, orange yellow, and it bubbles and it has like a fizzy top, like you're opening a soda. And as you uh, put it up to your face to look at it, it smells awful. Okay, well I'm gonna put it like on my belt, and then as I get that message from uh, Felsaf, uh, I'm gonna look up. You don't say anything. Kind of furrow my brows and start work walking towards back uh, towards the entrance. Falstaff, you feel the tech thoughts now are coming by Callus to the uh, northeast by the entrance. We know you're here. Just say that generally turning around. Do you lure your prey into this cave? Is that how you feed? Just keep walking around a little bit. Oh, man. Old man's going crazy again. I don't see a thing. There's something in here, I'm telling you. I'm not crazy. I'm not old. Were we still in the blighted area of the forest? Yeah. All right. Do you just need a nap? I, uh, maybe. I, I think a nap might, might do me a little good. Can you help me find a nice spot to lay down? We're not napping in here. Yeah, you're not <laughs> Oh, okay. The detect thoughts is floating above false stuff and roof. Do I feel like, do we still feel like something's watching us then? Like, intently? Yeah, that feeling has one. Now that he said that, it's, okay, even more heightened. He's just, he's just kind of pinpointing the thoughts of whatever this thing is as it kind of moves around. Do we have anything to, like, dispel magic around an area? Try to dispel magic. What if it's, like, invisibility or something? Rue, it's above us. I'm going to take us. Fireball! No, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> take us back here. It's following us. I'm scared. From where you guys were, you see a, a body materialize. It's about nine feet tall. It looks to be sort of like a troll, but it has a, a ghostly shape and a ghostly figure. And as you dimension door away from it, it lets out this low guttural. <laughs> Well, now ain't nobody got time for that. You said I was crazy, lady. I just saved your life. Fair enough. Ooh, spiritual goes first. Yeah. It's going to hit the closest person. Ooh, tops. Goes over to tops. He's going to uh, bite you. Sure, 12 misses. Going to claw you. He's going to claw you. Jeez. Oh, lost. Where's your HP go? Fourteen AC, the 
So this ghostly troll just uh, unloads on you. Aww. And she's immediately she's just cushing blood and she's barely able to, to keep floating around. When both those claws hit you, they are painful and very cold. Jax. You summon two dire wolves right behind him. Okay. Next to each other. And then as a bonus action, I'm turn into dire wolf myself. Maybe I'll just for the tire wolves. Oh. That tire wolf have one. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep them both on the same turn too, so it's a little easier. It's like they both have 17. Both bite attacks hit the spiritual and go through. Callus. Uh, I'm going to throw one sec. My alchemist fire right there, so it splashes onto the troll. Okay. And oh god damn! The troll matrix is the uh, alchemy fire. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and I'm going to shield the face tops. All right, tops. You have a 16 armor class. Rue. All right, now I've never fought no troll, nor no ghost. Uh, what do you guys reckon that we're gonna do here? And then, just kill nobody it. has any idea how to fight a ghost. Not sure that it is a ghost. Um, I'm gonna guess. I guess just just a fireball. For two damage. The fireball hits. And he, it doesn't look like it affects him too much, but he does take damage. But it didn't go through. Okay. Yeah. Tops. Can I can I use cure wounds on myself? Because it says a creature I touch, and just touch myself. Yeah. yeah. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> My stuff keeps moving. Something's really wrong with my computer. Heal yourself for seven. And then I want to go invisible. Okay. So you're invisible and no longer bleeding out? All staff. Step up. Hey, uh, what attack did Rue use? Oh, Firebolt. Firebolt. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Firebolt. I'll just, Falstaff just kind of looks over at Rue. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. Cast haste on her. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Songbird. She's gonna stay right there. Dedic. 
Um, gonna cast. I'm gonna use Hunter Scent. Okay. He is immune to all attacks that aren't magical. Shit. All right, I'll do a uh, as a bonus action. Larry's Prey for that 1d6. I'm going to move there. Okay. Spiritual is going to turn to the Direwolf to the north. Right. Claw. Claw. 36. Let's do it. All right. I can attack him. Hit him. Um, yep, you have the magic claws, don't you? Yep, I have the yep. primal strike. Yeah. Spiritual is knocked prone. As yeah. your your claw is like full damage, you feel the chunky flesh of the troll as you scrape through it, and he Can falls he... to one knee. <laughs> The attack, um, like, Why does he get an op opportunity? If you move away from him, Wise Pro? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he can, but let me check. He can with disadvantage. Player's handbook hype in the chain in the search. <laughs> what? I just searched Brown in the in the handbook on the roll twenty. It popped up. That's sweet. Woo! Hype. He's so much easier. That's that's really nice. Yeah. So he can attack you just disadvantage. All right, that's good. Stuff. Hey, has cool pictures. Um, just to keep up the sod of these, like they'll they'll work. Kind of okay. Cool. So spiritual is knocked to one knee, prone as he's surrounded by direwolves. <laughs> <laughs> the cows up. Uh, oh, let's try acid. Deck save. But disadvantage because he's prone. Twelve. Nope. You see the acid splash onto this ghostial figure. And he takes the damage. He lets out another roar. When I put the bracers on, did she feel the magical effects of the bracers or no idea? You're not sure what they do, but they feel magical on you. And you also have haste, so it feels like you're, uh, you just struck a can of Red Bull and you're just flying around. All right, so just, haste, just to try. If I can make it over there. I cannot. Doesn't your movement increase with haste? Yeah. Uh, doubles. Movement doubles. You have two plus two AC. Advantage on deck saves and you get one more attack. Oh, one more. Damn. You get one more action. Okay. Just remember if you cast a spell during your turn. It has to be a cantrip, but like you can cast a cantrip and then another big spell. Right. I just I just wanted to try this just to see if it would do anything if I hit. Damn, that's too low. You run up and poked him with a dagger. Yeah. It passes through. Okay. No, I just thought the bracers were going to be cool and relevant. Okay. So I did that, and then I can still cast the spell. You'll be at disadvantage. I just didn't. Why? You're in melee range. Casting a range. Oh, yeah. All right. But technically, range attacks get disadvantage on prone targets, but you're already at disadvantage too. 
It's just normal. We, we never really played with that rule. Oh, hey. Bink. You stab him with the dagger, it goes through, and because you're not very good with the dagger, it slips out of your hand, and you catch it, and try to fire a firebolt. Miss. Careful! Tops. The invisible tops. If I use Hail of Thorns, is that magic? It is. Okay. Can Okay, I want to use the Hail of Thorns, and then... Okay, and then make a attack. First one, the second one hits. Roll a d10. Mm, okay. So your first arrow attack goes through, misses. The second one hits, and as it does, the the thorns explode into him. I'm echoing in somebody. Oh, it's you. <laughs> the thorns explode into the spiritual. I'm still echoing in you. And he takes the damage. False damage. Oops, sorry, sir. So Falstaff just looks below him. He's like, ooh, bright light. He kind of spends his turn trying to catch this light. Do I have any luck? Take a slide of hand check. Ooh. Or the first one. <laughs> you grab the ball, but it's, it's every time you grab it and you know successfully you would catch it, it just goes through you like it's ethereal. Songbird. Gonna stay there. Dadic. Um, no, the only magical attacks hurt him. I'm gonna run up with my trident. Okay. Stabby. All right. You. Uh, Dadic pulls out this large trident that's covered in corals and fish, and he stabs the, the troll twice. What's the extra D6 or D8? Uh, two hand. Ah. Uh, um, and then he has Slayer's Prey on. Yep. So 2D6. Roll. Here you go. Eight. The trail roars. Sorry, distraction. No, no. I mean, I would. I would just say, yeah, pick the one that you want to use it on. It's not a big deal. Because sure. I would, if I was oh, a good DM, yeah. I would say this one looks like it's going to hit. This one looks like it's going to miss, kind of thing. Okay. Uh, troll is going to attack. It's going to claw the wolf that looks hurt. It's going to yes. claw the wolf again. And then he's going to bite Dadic. Dadic hitting last. No, you don't. You gonna cut it? You're too slow, troll. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen. Let's do it. Make Here it have cut a whole lot. Um, since he has Slayer's Prey. One second. I have this. Okay, so you can add a d6 to your roll. Damn, damn. That's damn. Sweet. Say wisdom? Yeah. Alright, you roll two or higher. Two or higher. I'm so echoing in your mic. Yeah! yeah. That's so damn loud. So much into blocking that. <laughs> <laughs> so you take 17 psychic damage, but you are not stunned. As he clamps down on you with his bite, uh, his teeth feel cold and 
Slimy. Just to add a little dialogue, so like Falstaff looks distracted with the Will-O-Wisp, but out of the corner of his eye, he sees the attack on Dadic. Tries to interrupt it. Nice. Jax. Brown bear. Um, gonna try to bite it. Hits. Yeah, he never stood up. He's still prone. A strange, uh, he's not bleeding, but his form seems to start to dissipate. Ooh, uh, the other dire wolf. Yeah. I'm gonna try to roll attack that dire wolf. Uh, just try to, like, growl at it, like, attract its attention from the attic. Make a intimidation check. Uh, wisdom. So? Uh, the wolf. Yeah, make it roll wisdom. Actually, uh, make a charisma check instead. I screwed that up. Intimidation is charisma. Ooh, okay, 15. Noted. Dire wolf howls at the spiritual as it's starting to dissipate. Callus. Well, let's use that uh acid again. Talk about a shitty roll, Jesus. Since his form is dissipating, you throw the acid and it splashes on the ground, but like his legs have started to, to vanish and it misses. <laughs> Three crook ones. <laughs> Rue. Could I do like a Arcana check to see, you know, now that I'm so close to him, I can feel his energy. Could I dictate like what kind of magic he would be resistant or uh, vulnerable to? Like acid, cold, fire, thunder. Let's say Dadic told you when he checked it that he's immune to anything non magical, but magical attacks hit him. Oh, that's yeah, all I know. Sorry. I thought that was. He's... Well, no, I understand that, but I'm just saying, does he have a weakness to a specific type of mad? No. Okay. Um, we are. I guess we're gonna we're gonna try this. Oh shit! I wanted to move back and take an opportunity strike first, and then. Seventeen for seventeen seconds. Fucker. Mistakes. Alright, and then it's gonna be uh it's gonna be thunder damage. Alright, roll D twenty, add your attack modifier. <laughs> Misses. Okay. You get plus six, right? But you get a plus six on your spell attacks. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, misses. It's in your spell. No, you get plus eight. Hits. Roll okay. again, because you have disadvantage on your attack. I have disadvantage on it? Yeah, he's prone. Actually, no, we haven't used that. Don't worry about it. Roll your damage. So we haven't used that before. So casters have disadvantage on prone targets? And like rangers and stuff, but we oh. we haven't we haven't played that yet, so don't even worry about it. Yeah, like anything outside of five feet, I think, right? Yeah. Twelve damage. All right. You said thunder. Mm-hmm. The spiritual is basically uh, smoke from the waist down as he's starting to dissipate, and his arms are starting to flail. As your uh, chromatic orb hit. Tops. All right. Roll d10 for your second attack, which hits. Oh, wow. So close. Your, your arrow hits 
the troll again as he's dissipated and explodes in thorns. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pete. He's still alive, but barely. False staff. I kind of just jump around the Willow Wisp. Try to catch it again. Well, I suppose he has his moments. Stand there. Try the trident again. All right, as you do, another troll appears next to Rue. It's floating right here. Daddy, how do you want to do with your trident? Because you're killing him with the first attack. Um, I'd have stick it through his chest. Or invisible ghost chest. As you do, he roars and then just fades out in front of you. And then the, there's another troll that just randomly appears next to Rue. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> And then I'm going to, let's see, take a step back, and I'm in my turn right there. Okay. Jax. Uh, spiritual, what's there? He strangely doesn't have one. He's just floating in front of Rue, just staring at her. But he has no initiative. Sit down. Okay. My other sit down. Okay. Cows. Drop concentration on tops and I'll cast aid on brew. Bad deck and tops. Okay. Hold on. I have to move up 20 feet, but I'll do that. And really, you've lost haste, too. But you've gained aid. While Rue is still believing in the powers of her damn bracers, she's going to pull some Wonder Woman shit. And she's going to hold them up like that in a defensive stance. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see what happens. All right, tops. Why did concentration or why did haste drop on her? It takes a lot of concentration to keep that up, and he got distracted by the fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Was that why? <laughs> Rue or to tops. Uh, both arrows pass through the spiritual, even with the magical effect on the arrow. Okay, can I, like, move closer to it and stay invisible, or do I come visible when I move? Yeah, you can move up to it and turn invisible. False death. Kind of see this troll up here. I'll come a little closer. Just kind of a little puzzled. Okay. The spiritual reaches out to Rue and gives her a hug and it vanishes. What? And that's combat. Rue? See, I told you, if we just hugged all these monsters, we'd win every time. You should go hug the dire wolves. Okay, I'm gonna flutter over. And Do you truly feel that way? Because uh, my body is a bit bruised. I'm getting Rude. whacked by that guy's knee claw. Are Are you on the troll side? What just happened there? <laughs> now, why uh, would you think that? I don't know. You like just gonna be and listening stab up there. it? Like I'm on the verge of like passing out. I really do not think I was on his side. I have no idea what happened. I mean, in all the 80 years, I mean, the the 15 years young I've been adventuring, I've never seen anything like that before. So confused. 
50. Oh, yeah. Okay. Y'all are killing trolls. We're like a bunch Maybe. of murderers. <laughs> Maybe he was just trapped here. We killed his spirit, which really just released him. I'm just confused. Well, you guys that still have Aid, a- Rude, Dadic, and Tops are still a little hurt. But uh, the Wisps are still just floating around, and you've collected some items from the dead bodies. I will look at Faust and say, well, I saw you hate sitter. Well, where'd it go? Didn't fall off because she wasn't exhausted after. What? What? I didn't do nothing. I was just playing with that light over there. Both of you guys roll d20. Just a straight d20. Yeah! Okay. I mean, I'm I'm over there minding my business. Just playing with the light. And you guys are all killing this spirit troll. Could have been a nice guy. Rue's going to walk up to Falstaff and place her hand on her shoulders. Are you even real? <laughs> I'm going to look into his eyes and see how there he actually is. Or is he giving me like a straight up Edmund vibe? He's just a fucking crazy old man. I'm just having fun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> god damn. <laughs> He seems like he's having fun. <laughs> well, why, why did you guys you decide are. to... Why, why'd you kill that spirit troll? He was just hanging out in here, and all of a sudden, a group of a million people come in here and kill him. I mean, there are a couple of dead bodies over there, but he might not have done it. He attacked us. He also no longer feels the presence of eyes like he did before. When he oh, appeared, he... he hit Rue. Oh, that's true. Do you see that giant bruise across my face? Oh, wow. Yeah, I could definitely see that now. <laughs> I, now I now she's that. disfigured for life. I mean, I, I don't know if that's just how they welcome people into their homes here. I, I think I just forgot that that dude hit us. Yeah. I need a nap. Like right? it's, it's possible. I think I'll do it too. Okay. Uh, do you want to both roll or do you want to have one roll with advantage? I'll just let him go. Okay. With a 14, how much time do you guys want to spend in here collecting Nybrite? Not too long since we just were attacked by a goddamn spirit troll. So like so, uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Like Hour. 20 at most. 20 for 14. You somewhat hastily um, collect, and you're able to collect uh, 8 pounds of eyebright, which is pretty good. Pretty good haul. There's still some eyebright left in some corners, but you grab a ton of it, and then you guys, uh, like, you want to get out of there? I have, it, like, come here. Get the full staff on. Okay. While Callus and Dadek are clicking the eyebright, the Dyros are looking at Callus or a false staff. You said false staff, I, right? Yeah. He's blanked. Yeah. <laughs> I obviously see that, right? I'm not, oh, yeah, he's not trying to hide it, right? No. Yeah. So I, I see these dire wolves and I just kind of like, uh oh, get a little nervous, step back and stumble, fall on my back. Ah! Jax, what are you doing? I see that. I want to walk over and kick both the wolves. Get your lazy asses up. Still sitting. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. My goodness. <laughs> I'm also going to distribute some healing droids for people that are injured. Okay. I'm pretty sure that'll hit everyone to max. Maybe. Uh, pretty close, anyway. And uh, aid should drop off. 
Hey, Callus. I'd mm -hmm. you like to take a look at this. <clears throat> I pull the potion out that I pulled from the body and hand it over to him. Do you want to do this in here? Or do you want to go out? Yeah, I'm just going to do it here. Okay. Say outside of the cave, not in here. I want to get out of here. <laughs> uh, okay. Heal yourself, too. Heal yourself for 20. Rue? Oh. I dropped the... Andre. Okay. So you guys actually in the cave? Were the will o still yellow? The, yeah, they were the entire time. So you guys exit the cave. As you guys are walking out of the entrance of the cave, uh, what do you want to do? She left. She's her gone. auntie called her. <laughs> I just know she put that icon on yourself for being knocked down. <laughs> yeah. Old man Fargo boom. All right, how about now? So I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Do I know what it is? You're doing this right outside the cave? Yeah. Okay. It's about six at night. In the afternoon, the sun's starting to set a little bit. Um, the skies are still, from what you can make out through the the trees, still clear for the most part. But outside the cave, you guys are sitting down uh, and with a 27 on the alchemist kit. Sure. The potion is... You uncork the potion and look at it and swirl it around and it smells god-awful. And you exp you look at it for a bit and you see that it is a bottle of giant's urine. <laughs> oh my god that'd be perfect for you I'd rather not and I'll give it back to her uh well hey tops I'm sure you'd enjoy this Wait, You're creative. You phone. can figure out something to do with it. My favorite enemy is dragons, not giants. <laughs> you were pretty quiet there. Uh, dragons? Yeah, I was like, I could use that as like a bait or a lure. Is it too big for me to carry? Like, how would I hold that? As soon as you touch it, it shrinks to your hand, so you can hold it. There you go. <laughs> it, but okay. it smells god awful. But you can, you can take it if you want it. Okay. Is there anything that masks the smell? Now, so what it does oh. is, uh, you put it on yourself, and it keeps predators away from you while you guys are traveling. Okay, one Rue's still next to me too. I'm gonna tell her to put her arm up. Put your arm up. Okay, I'm just gonna take it. Then. Okay, you have a bottle of giant's urine. I oblige. What are the bracers? The bracers are. Bracers of archery. Oh well, I suppose. Those are probably the worst things for you. Well, I agree. Ooh, 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 I, I take them off. Ooh, those would be good well, on me. Topsy's about two. I do too. I mean, whoever wants them. Take them, Taps. I'll hand them off to her. Shrink okay. Ray! Taps is going to attune to the Bracers of Archery. Gives you plus two to attack and damage. 
putting them in your the one note. I suppose they look better on you. All right, you're all set. The braces of archery are in the uh, search thing too, to add it to your inventory. Well, what's the plan now? I, I think we need to have a discussion. About what? Why do we always kill everything in front of us? Because he attacked us. We have went over this. Oh, that's right. killed the hat. Literally two minutes ago. I want to kill Peggy, but they're like, why are we trying to kill everything in front of us? But that guy was cool and sparkly. His bite did not feel cool and sparkly. I forgot he attacked us. I'm my sorry, guys. My nipple's gone. <laughs> oh no, do you want me to take a look at that? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me take a look. I might no. be able to fix it. Don't touch my nipple. Or what used to be nipple. It's not there anymore. <laughs> It's a battle scar. It's hey, gone forever. Hey, uh, um, hey, Kallus, you got any something to heal this? He's missing a nipple. I can burn the other one off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stab hmm. you with well, maybe we could borrow one of the nipples from those corpses in there and just fuse it with you. <laughs> it's a battle scar now. I uh, heals. Uh, you heal Dadic for three. Can I heal his his nipple wound? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want it to be healed. <laughs> oh, okay. Then I won't lay my hands on his nipple wound. <laughs> my left nipple is not there anymore. <laughs> I hope you didn't have a nipple ring. Isn't that a popular thing in the Minotaur races? <laughs> no. On your on your nipples ring. and your nose. Oh my fucking god! I just realized what a minotaur is. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What do you think it is? I, I sure swear to God, I was I I know you kept saying minotaur, but I was picturing um fuck now I can't even think of what it is the half horse thing. Oh, the centaur. Yes, I kept thinking of that, and now I understand. Your character makes so much more sense now. <laughs> Put it in my bio. Missing left nipple from Spirit Troll. <laughs> Battle scars in my clan. Like, write a passage. Tell a story. Man, it looks like it hurt. It did. That's why I said it didn't feel cool and sparkly. But why'd you have to kill the guy? He bit my nipple off. Well, wasn't he already dead? Isn't that kind of what a spirit is? And he didn't seem too mad him coming How back. How do you kill Ruth? that which has no life? Yeah. I, I think you're confusing them attacking us with them just wanting to give us hugs. That one what? guy seemed pretty nice. I think he was happy because he's... we set him free. I think he just wanted to hug us, and you guys started shooting fireballs and stuff at him. Well, well next, else, next yeah. time you take the hugs first. Absolutely. Okay. Happy. As long as it's not that hag, I'll hug someone. There's something wrong with Falstaff. It's time for my nap. Well, as he's. Napping on the ground, I'm going to see. Is there like a spell on him or something? <laughs> you cast Identify on Fast Death with the ritual. And now, there's no magical effects on him. Guys, I think he's going senile. Does it seem he like he's a... going senile? Like... He is dementia. Are you just now coming to that conclusion? No, no, no. I'm... No, I think it's getting worse. <laughs> As, as Falstaff's laying on the ground napping, he kind of opens his eyes and says, 
I'll need someone to carry me. Goes back to sleep. <laughs> I just walk away. Can I make him medicine? <laughs> Can't make him small and put him in my pocket. That's the <laughs> for only for an hour, but I don't even know how small I get. Oh, it's all halved. Size is halved, so you'd be like three feet. Oh, maybe. <laughs> You want to do that? No. Okay. Fun. Roll insight check, Jax. I'm not going to carry myself, guys. Ball staff. Uh, you can roll deception against that if you want. Or you I'm going to take out my alchemy jug. jug. I'm going to fill it with wine, and then I'm going to dump it on his chest. Wait, wait, what's the insight for? He's trying to see if you're senile. You have dementia or... Okay, so if I rolled deception, what exactly would I be doing there? It doesn't necessarily mean that you had dementia, but you might be trying to hide it. I'm just going to do this. If that makes sense. Yeah, you, you can whisper Jax anything you want him to know, too, that he might have picked up. I'll send Jax a message. Cantrip style. Yeah, he might he won't know like if you're full on scene or anything, but he might be able to pick up some quirks or something. Hmm. Or he might <sighs> see the facade. How old does Falstaff look? Because I've asked him before. Um, he looks 60. 60? Yeah. He's like 60, 5'8", 210 pounds, a little chubby. He's got light skin, he's wrinkly, white hair. Let's try this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> As, so, how old does Falstaff actually? So hold on, how old is Falstaff actually? We, I tried asking him. So as as I see the zone of truth come out, I just like stand up. All right, I'll walk, and I just start walking out of the zone. All right. <laughs> so what he told me was that thing would happen. He's just lazy, and he doesn't want to walk back. Hey, I I told that to you in confidence, <laughs> Jax. I thought said. I thought we had a connection. Just said. Ah, uh, okay. I'll walk back. So I mean, I just said. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'm a little worn out from all this fighting. So are we walking back to Peggy's? Hell no. Why not? Well, I feel like we should backtrack, but I don't feel like it's a good idea to try to meet up with the game. I definitely don't think we should go back to Peggy's. Last we heard, her aunt was calling her. I'm not trying to meet the rest of the family. Give you kind of an idea where you are. Swamp Shack is Peggy's shack. You guys are a little north of there. So, I think either we try to kill her or we try to stop her from spreading this. Now that's a crazy lady I would support killing. She's gonna murder like the whole town of Muriel someday. Or we can try to convince. Muriel's already gone. Oh, Hollybrook. Can you convince a hag? Do you think that you're charismatic enough to convince a hag not to kill someone? I mean, I might be, because you know. I'm a cute old man. Why don't you try? <sighs> Sounds like a lot of work. So here's what's uh, gonna happen. We're gonna go back and her aunt, grandma, or whoever the fuck is gonna be there. So then we're fighting three hag. You really think the other two are gonna be as nice as her, Kellis? Why are you asking me? I don't want to go back there. 
Mask and Jack. We can try to. Oh. No. And if they're there, back out. She knew we were coming hundreds and hundreds of yards before we got there. Do you guys want to go to the lake? You think there's something there? I think she was what we were looking for. She was the reason you guys were sleepwalking. Okay. So we should just continue searching the rest of the forest. I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to get some of this eyebrow back to Hollybrook soon. I think we should stop that Figure out where. Well, I suppose that's a good idea as well. I could use a nice bed. So you guys want to go back to Hyper? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go back to Hollybrook and gather us all. Guys, go through the swamp. Make it a couple of days through the swamp, through the blight part of the swamp. Eventually, it turns into the, the normal looking swamp again, which is a, a Big relief for you guys to get away from that smell and that decay. Does it seem like it's spread since we first entered? Uh, no, it has not spread. Okay. You get through the swamp, uh, the normal swamp, without much of an issue. Uh, where's my forest? Back to the deep dark forest. So this is the first time I'm gonna ask you guys to make a watch lineup for when you guys take a rest. So make sure you give yourself your spells and your HP back. But who wants to have the first and second watch? I can do first watch. Okay. I'll do second while I uh, sew some more of the spider web clothing. Okay. And I have songbird watch on both ones too. Okay. So. Callus, during your watch, the uh, the skies open up above you and it starts to downpour rain. It's, it's a heavy thunderstorm. And there's a couple instances where lightning strikes some trees around you. Luckily, nothing catches fire or anything, but the lightning strikes are enough to wake up the party. You guys pop open your eyes and look around and see the storm and cover yourselves as best you can under trees and canopies. And then during tops is watch. Ooh, a 17, nice. That's funny. So I had this thing that I rolled for long rest stuff to see if something happens to you guys. And I rolled a lightning strike for Falstaff and I rolled this lightning goes away for tops. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Right? So the storm that came so quickly starts to dissipate during her watch. It eventually turns into a light rain. The thunder and lightning stop. And there's just a slight drizzle. But pretty uneventful for the rest of the night. You guys continue traveling. Keep in mind, while you guys are traveling, if you ever want to stop and like talk about stuff, just tell me and I'll, I'll stop doing what I'm doing. But you guys get to the part where you met the unicorns. Is there any sign that they've been about? 
Make an investigation. They moved what looks to be east towards the Highland Highlands, kind of towards where you met the giant uh, bird, going more towards the mountains, away from the swamp. All right. I was just curious. Another couple of days pass. Who wants to take watch for this night? Uh, I'll do the first half of this night. I'll do oh. second. Okay. Give me a uh, perception. Ooh. Isn't that like the best sound ever? The crickets chirp. Yeah, I, had to, I had to get away from the swamp so I didn't get to the forest, so. <laughs> it's a pretty uneventful night for you, uh, Rue, with the 21. However, the forest is now starting to give way a bit more. It is the more healthier, vibrant green. Not as thick, a lot easier to walk. And then, uh, Dadek, perception. While you're uh, watching, a small rabbit comes into your guys' campsite. It gets close to you and looks like it's uh, trying to beg for food. Just kind of bouncing around, looking at you. Pretty fearless uh, for. I think, I think I have some. I can kind of talk to him. Okay. Nope, that's not it. Should have read it before I had linked it. Oh, here it is. All right, you want to communicate with the rabbit? Yep. You can just kind of understand simple ideas. He seems to be asking for food. I want to gesture, no, go the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit puts its head down and hops out of the campsite. You can get some karma there. How do you flip off a rabbit? <laughs> the final boss of the campaign. Shoot an arrow at it. If he pats his foot really fast at you, that means he's trapped. You're okay, patting, so. you. You're patting <laughs> deep in the forest. <laughs> All right, then you guys wake up the next morning. The rest of the travel is, is a very uneventful, and you guys eventually make your way to Hollybrook. Map should change soon for you. There you go. Oh, yes. I'm excited for a nice, warm bed. You get here about midday. People are bustling around, going about their daily chores. Where do you want to go? Okay, I suppose. Yeah. I'll go to number one. Yeah, well, they do that. I'll go back to the, uh, the inn. Okay. So I got Jackson Kyle's going to the clinic. Everyone else going to the inn. Can I split off from the group and try to find, see if Edmund's still in town? Uh, sure, but you know he usually goes to the end if he's there. Oh, well, then I'll just go to the end with everybody else. All right, Callus and Jax, you guys make your way to the uh, the clinic. Uh, Boris and Vieira are there, tending to a, uh, a patient. The patient. Looks like he was bleeding from the eyes, but they were using some of the eyebright. And there's a little bit of eyebright left, but they've been using a ton of it recently. They both look happy to see you as you come in. Uh, oh. Good news! I got a bunch more eyebright for us. Eight pounds for you. Oh, that's great, son. Glad you got some eyebright. <laughs> Just a bunch of deep talking rats. <laughs> 
What does the mom sound like? Don't even ask. <laughs> His mom goes, Oh, I missed your son. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we have, what, it's 8 pounds of Ibrite and 16 extra stocks. Oh, we could use this right away. Now please stick it in the corner and we'll begin getting it ready for the patients. We've had almost a case a day since you left. How much do you use in a day? Oh, this should last us for a couple months. This is a pretty good haul. Where'd you find this? Some cave way deep in the forest. Well, son, looks like you've been exploring, expanding your horizon. But, uh, is that guy on the table still there? Conscious? He is. He's just kind of sitting there looking at you guys speaking. He's used to it because he knows you guys. Yeah, I'm going to ask him... Were you bit by a rat by chance? Big one, taller than us. He says, uh, no, I was just working the farm and I felt a little prick in the back of my heel. I thought it was maybe a spider bite or something bit me. A couple of day or day later, or so the blood came and I freaked out. I came here as quick as I could. Did you pull anything out of your foot after that prick? No, it was just a like a red bump. Just one small red bump. Guess I need to get me some higher boots. Your dad uh, talks to you, he goes, uh, it looks like it was like a tick bite or a flea bite. Ebola. Ebola. Mm. Yes, this might be crossing the species. species. What made you say it was a rat? (laughs) We got attacked by about six of them and about half my group started bleeding from the eyes as soon as they were bit. So when they were bit, the effects took immediate effect. Usually it takes a day or so to kick in. I guess that would mean that the rats that you saw are carriers. Maybe these ticks or fleas or whatever is hopping off the rats and that's how it's spreading. Hope not, because that means they're le- are coming pretty close to town. Yeah, that's a scary thought. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right. I don't know if I said anything to you last time I was here, but found some old guy in the woods that's gonna start growing some eyebrow for us. That'll be really helpful. I put a notice up in the end, hopefully to get some more, but with what you found and with what the old man will give us, we should be okay as long as it doesn't get too crazy. Boy, well, you going to need anything else from the forest if we go back in there soon? He, uh, he, he hops off his uh, stool next to the bed where he was working on the guy and he goes over to a uh, his desk and he opens up a uh, journal and starts to look through it. Uh, well... There hasn't been really anything else of note, but we are getting a little low on fey ferns if you come across the fey fern. Fucking fey fern! You know, they're, uh, they're blue and they have a, a long stalk, green stalk. Usually found deep in the forest. 
Well, I'll keep my eye out. Gotta meet up with my friends now. You take care of yourself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys are at the end. The uh, the normal Eva and Durgle are staying front, staying guard in front of the inn. A lot of the familiar faces are there. However, this time uh, Cora is not playing any music, but the two tieflings that run the bar are still there, and some of the help. You notice the two lycanthropes that you saw earlier. The blacksmith Daenerys still there. Uh, the man and wife, the red hair and the red beard. A group of what looks to be adventurers are also enjoying some drinks. And then uh, the group there. And then the group you saw before that really kept themselves in the corner are there too. I'll walk in and just take our normal table. So right now me and Cal sitting there. That's how you guys get here in like 20 minutes. Do I see my dude anywhere? Which one? Edmund. You whore. <laughs> <laughs> my dude, not my man. He said which one? <laughs> oh, Edmund yeah. or Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see Edmund. Either one of bar. them. Edmund's not sitting currently at the bar anywhere now. Well, you know what? I'm gonna go up and get a black bear down at the table then. I'll hang around. The tiefling behind the bar, Vita, with her peg leg, asks if you guys want anything to drink while you sit down. Any food? I'm by around for everybody. Mug ale is four copper a person. Got it. She slides a couple of mugs down to you. It's not the best ale, but it's pretty good. It's cold. Can I have some... Uh... Lizard tenders. Lizard tenders? Like chicken tenders, but lizard meat. We look at you. I don't think we got that. <laughs> I mean, you have the trick. You trying? Are you trying to? I mean, say something he's about been marinating. <laughs> no, I'm good. Barry, the trick looks at you. That's anything he's kind of staring at you. Trying to figure out if you're talking about him or not. Just smile at him. <laughs> Just make that face too. <laughs> <laughs> really? <Creepy. laughs> I'm going to give her four more copper for a drink for him. Oh, thank you. You buying this for drinking or because you want to know something? Nope, you were just staring at me and made me feel uncomfortable. So I bought you a drink, so you quit staring at me. Well, then I'll turn my back to you. And he turns his back and starts to, to lick up the ale. No, why don't you come join us? Come take a seat on our table. Oh, because that one there is not very friendly. Oh, he's nice. Staring at people is not friendly. You can come at the table. He kind of looks over at the table and he... Looks down. Uh, seems pretty far away. I'll just stay here if you don't mind. And I, I walk up to him, pick him up, bring him over. <laughs> Set him on the table. He doesn't fight it. He's sits down next to you. There you go. Now you have some people to hang out with. Have I seen this one before? Or was she here last time? She's been here before, but it was a while ago. It's been a couple of weeks. I'm eyeing these two over in the corner. They currently have their back towards you. They're looking straight ahead. 
whispering amongst themselves and drinking some ale. Those are the two that are you, Callie. So the group just sees Falstaff kind of look around, stand up, and just walk over here. <laughs> Let him have it. Puts his, in D&D. puts his hand on their shoulders and passes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesus Christ. The, this one here. She's a, a young, striking, petite woman. She kind of looks over at Hepsiva. And then uh, this one. Also looks over at Hepzibah like, uh, uh, he walks over to you and he picks you up and he sits you at this chair here. Hey, hey. <sighs> I have money. Jeez. I think you had to talk to that guy. He goes back. Looking to buy, sir. It's okay. You, you, I'm just looking to say hi. That's all. Those words cost money. What costs Ooh. money? If you wish to speak to them, their company has a price. I think Harry was a very political and very good conversationist. Oh, really? And he points to her. She does like a half bow. Very graceful bow, though. Falstaff kind of looks over his shoulder sneakily. Leans in. How much for them? For the day? For conversation or for pleasure? Or is conversation your pleasure? Uh, let's say either. Which one would you like to hire? How about both? Karen and Opal? Any points at both women? Yep. For both for the entire day, 200 gold pieces. He kind of sits back in his chair a little bit. 200 gold pieces? Uh, maybe another time. 20 minutes. Five gold pieces for Karen. 10 for both. I see. A lot can be done in a day. He kind of nudges you and winks. I'll uh, make sure to get back with you on that one. I'll have to think this one through. I understand. And then he points over at Kent. If you want Kent, though, you have to book in advance. He's a very sought after. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, yes. He's a very good looking man. Look over at him and wink. Kent looks at you and winks, too. Thank you, Hepziba. I'll have to let you know what I want to do. He does a half bow with his head up, then he goes back to his post. Ooh, those are some fine-looking ladies. As you guys are talking, the you trying to pay them just to tuck you in? These two here are kind of <laughs> looking at you, kind of bewildered. <laughs> and then we got up and started talking again. Well, if you ain't gonna tuck me in, Rue, who's gonna do it? Jack. No, I'm not saying anything. You hear the fireworks going off? What? Somebody shooting off fireworks out there. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Going on? Drug her up. And by this time, Kyle and Jack, you guys would be getting here too. Sneak back over slowly. All right. I'll start to walk in. Sit down at the bar. Okay. I just shake my head at Belsack. Jack, when you sit down, the two guys at the bar kind of glance over at you, and uh, Ilok turns his, his body to put his back towards you. Just wave him off. And put down four copper. All right, Vita slides you a mug of ale. 
can I recall the information? Did we say something that like the eye rot was being caused by the lycanthrope people in the woods? What? They can were we say something like that. They didn't cause it. Okay. They were talking about they would. Yeah, no, they were trying to cure it with the. By turning people. Mm -hmm. Hey, Beery. <laughs> huh? Kick up so he looks at you. Any new gossip? What did you hear? Uh, up north. Where the pirates and the mermaids are supposed to be, there's a port. But I tell you, I've never seen a mermaid. Have you seen a mermaid? Nope. Never seen one. I have seen a goat swim, though. I don't know if that counts. Maybe not oh as graceful. Oh my god, I want to see a there, mermaid. So many more questions now. Is there any other gossip? Uh, did you hear about the ferret? Someone trained a ferret to sneak in here and steal stuff when people aren't looking. You gotta be careful and you gotta be quick. Stealing it. Oh. Stealing Sitting gold. Down. Yeah, I'll sneak in. Steal your gold and sneak out. Huh. Weird. I wonder who would train a ferret to do such a thing. Maybe it's that old man over there that keeps looking at those women. Yeah, he thinks he's being sneaky. Sometimes <laughs> I think he forgets he's not invisible. He's standing right next to them staring <laughs> at them. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little out. <clears throat> Against all rational thoughts, uh, keep him with us. But if you want to see mermaids, you got to go north up there. But you got to be careful of those, uh, those minotaurs and those yaks. They're up north, too. So we were out in the woods for how long? A week? Two weeks. Two weeks. Now, Beery, have we heard anything else about this minotaur clan to the north? Last we heard, they were causing a whole bunch of ruckus up there. Well, I know Alton's sent a guard. He's been watching what's going on up north, but the uh, they have some people up there, but they haven't really took anyone recently. And then uh, Commander Liara left, and she took a couple of ventures with her to start a fort in the middle of the forest with stolen lands. I think kind of close to the Sapphire Lake, not... 100% sure where, but that's just what I heard. There hasn't been any uh, recent travelers coming up north from the woods, has there? People are staying away from the north as much as they can, and no one really wants to go from St. Taviar down to Hollybrook, so we don't see too many. They mostly come from Rodar. Also, we haven't had any visitors from Tolmund. No, people don't like to go into the stolen lands. It's dangerous. What time is it? Looking out the door. That's about midday. The sun's almost directly above you. Be directly up. A look at the bulletin board. I'm going to leave this up, and then let's take a quick break. Sure. Cool. Try to hit that 10 o'clock break time.
<laughs> that eight o'clock. <laughs> Be right back. By the way, it's Steam Summer Sale. Y'all got anything on Steam yet for the summer sale? No, I haven't kind of watched it, but I haven't seen anything too crazy yet. I almost got uh, Total War 2. What's that? I almost picked up Rome Total War 2, but then I passed on it. I find that I have a bunch of shit on my wish list, but I just never buy it. Yeah, yeah me too. I grab the rogues. Uh, artifact weapon, or the weapon thing. Tower. Trying to get the out now before it goes away. Nice, man. <clears throat> what eye level do people need to do that now? I was 905 and no legendaries. It was pretty easy. That full artifact weapon is crazy. I was thinking about doing it on my priest, but my eye level's like 825. Hmm, that might be tough. Yeah. Go out to the Argus. You can get a, like 900 pretty fast. Aren't those little things you buy with the shards like 935? 915? 915. That's more than most of the armor I have on all three of my characters. Yeah. Argus is strong. That'd be badass if we all did like a supply drop group. It's like fuck yeah, we're gonna do that shit. Fuck yeah. Gonna stealth around and fuck shit up. Are rogues good at Mythic Plus? Yeah, outlaw rogues. Pretty ridiculous. A Blade Fury just cleaves everything. I'm not like oh, a yeah. Windwalker monk, but I'm pretty good. I know they have that one finishing combo move where they jump in the air and deal AoE damage too. They made that PvP only BFA. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, sucks. Death from above. Sad times. Do you still have the barrage? The nope. uh, sh <laughs> they took Cannonball uh, Barrage away too. Damn. The nurse. Start him back. I remember the teeth. I don't remember anything else, though. Cows. Yeah, I don't either. Well, I just have teeth. Good enough. Maybe some fur. Oh, did you take organs? I think so. Organs and jars. Yeah. <laughs> Got a heart and some liver and some lungs or something. <laughs> I think we just need Tyler. Tyler. Can we say that I have a skull of them, too? I remember you rolled pretty high. Yeah. I think it was mediocre, actually. <laughs> mediocre. Mediocre. Enough to get some stuff, but not a lot. I was going to make that and hanging it. Oh, my God, Shani, I have a I have a boarding dog that takes cannabis pills. <laughs> What? It takes cannabis pills. Interesting. Because it has some type of anxiety problems, so I have to give it little weed pills every couple hours. <laughs> what? Wow. Does that help? Does it really help? I mean, the dog is zonked out. I don't know what its <laughs> normal state is, but this is pretty awesome. It really wants to eat everything, so I'm pretty sure it's high. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So you want to make a transmuter stone? Uh, I'm going to do the proficiency in constitution. Okay. Give yourself 10 speed and all that stuff too. And then what's no, your you, you only um, get to oh, yeah, one. You choose one. Yeah. So you want proficiency in constitution? Yeah. yeah that's... Okay. So I keep forgetting to make it. Static back? Yeah, I just walked in. Yeah, okay. I think I'm drunk. So that's that job board. Like Falstaff, or like you, or both? Like me. Okay. <laughs> Had too much whiskey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I put well, this, that works. <laughs> I put this uh, cherry juice, made ice cubes out of cherry juice, and put whiskey on top of it, and it's good. 
Ooh. Too much. Drinking too much. <laughs> Just tell me when you want me to switch from the job board. I'm good. Was our uh, investigation of the lake on the job board? No. Oh, no. No, we were just, um, we have an expedition. Okay. Gonna go up to the bar next to Jax and then kinda in view of Cyril and Airlock, take out that Skaven skull I have. And I'm gonna put it on and say, how dumb do I look looking at Jax? <laughs> you look fucking stupid. Good. These guys are looking at you. And roll perception. Callus. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Distracted by the skull. You don't see anything but Jack, so I'll for you. I'm gonna like nudge him towards it. The people Just... right here are staring at you too. Does it look like they care? It doesn't look, it doesn't look like they care, but they're just kind of like, uh... Confused. I'm not gonna be really quiet, but I'll say, uh... So... How do you think these things spread this? If they don't get it themselves. Are they immune? Um, don't see much of a reaction from either group. It could be. Well, it's gonna be the horn. Uh, the horn, horned, jet. Um, spreads it. Uh, through the rats. The rats. Um. They carry diseases, all the time, so it doesn't really affect them. Their ticks jump off, or fleas, or whatever, um, and they just only infect population. Any reactions? They're both listening, but they don't, they're not showing much of a reaction on their face, but you can tell they're both eavesdropping on you, both groups. I just wanted to see if they'd do any big reactions. I'll put it away. Just drop it in the bag. Alok and Siren both get up from their uh from the bar. Both of you guys are perception. I'll tell them to have a good day. They kinda look over at you. Elok nods. Siren doesn't even Really pay much notice to you. With well, the nineteen twenty, you do notice that Ciro, when he walked out, he uh, kind of looked at the guy in the middle there, this guy, with a quick glance, and then he, he just kept on going. So they might have a action with the group. Oh, maybe. So this guy here in the middle, uh, he's a large, six and a half foot tall, strong human. Got dark eyes with the one that's been hurt. He, he has a, a big confidence around him. It doesn't look like he shows much emotion. I say that because um, the only two groups that are silent. Well, the one group that's silent, really. So I can't. Um, so they might have, they're also silent too, very quiet. Okay, that's it. The woman next to him has, uh, she's another, she's tall too, long blonde hair, piercing hazel eyes, 
She has those fingertip claw gauntlets on from before. And then the other one is that he's shorter with a long red beard. They went back to their drinks, though. They don't talk amongst themselves. They just, just kind of sit there and drink. Can't hear me typing, can you? No. Okay. I don't have the typewriter keyboard. Like, but yeah. Let's see, what, like what they're what they're doing. Talking about Cyril and the other guy. Yeah. We can, if you want. I'm sure, Cyril's just walking around being an asshole. Oh, no, no. I mean, people, uh, bottom right. I feel like if we follow them, we'll just get in some trouble. There's no feeling. It's... would probably happen. I'm gonna walk down. Them. As you approach the table, uh, the woman and the shorter man with the red hair both kind of look at you puzzled. And then the larger man sits back in his chair and looks at you. The shorter man you, says, uh, uh, Pleasure to meet you as well, sir. My name's Jax. Uh, they call me Galwheel. What can I do for you? Just, uh, you know, chatting. It is a bar after all. So what brings you guys here? We came here maybe six months back. Heard there was work to be found. I'm assuming you came for the same reason. Is that it? What kind of work somebody's, do you guys do? Somebody's got to clean up what happened here. Happened to so. you? Oh, yeah, with the war a couple years back and Rodar being more concerned about Rodar and not its other cities, we got to gotta look out for ourselves. Yeah, the woman... Leans forward towards you. You come to offer us a job there, boy? Oh, just a chat. I hope that doesn't bother you. She's, she's trying to get a red face, and she looks like she's about to uh, say something mean and as she opens her mouth like the taller human male puts his arm out in front of her and she stops and then he looks over at you uh, my name is Doolin Urson it's a pleasure to meet you nice to meet you too are you here for the same reason uh always yeah we tend to stay together look out for each other Safety in numbers. Okay. I'm assuming you're a hunter like myself. No one else really ventures out into the stolen lands unless they're hunting or gathering. I've known these lands. Grew up here. Yeah, it's good to know. I, I came from the north been pretty far travels but I go over to where the work is you might know us uh, the Broken Axe tribe up by Xantavia yeah, yeah. alright guys have a good day Get up, walk back up to the palace. Right. 
Put it in another, another drink. 